told you if we broke attendance records, I'd get the church logo tattooed on my arm. Skip, remember back when we first started? All we did was preach the gospel. Ooh, Superman works. I like Superman. Guy, what do you think? What happened to you? Me? Your dad is the one with the gimmicks. The power of the Holy Spirit propels us. I just went to church to get back to the gospel. Problem is you're trying to get your message across. Uh, the gospel? Right, right, right. And ain't nobody listening to that. A good Friday and Easter. I need something big. Amen? Bigger than the resurrection. Bigger than anything we've ever done. National headlines. Preach on the death and resurrection of Jesus. Plan. An actual crucifixion. Uh oh. By placing the nails through your palms in the right place, we hope to avoid major nerve damage. Operation Stop Skip is a go. That's awesome. You have to cancel this Good Friday stunt. Don't be so dramatic, honey. Ooh, I like the rusty ones. What are you gonna do? I told him he's insane. I've been praying for you about that toe fungus. This could be beneficial for all parties involved. We foster a yes environment here. <laughs> God wanted me to marry you and you could be my wife. I have an answer for you. <laughs> Everybody, uh, welcome to the Maurice Brown Show, ladies and gentlemen. You were just watching the trailer for Church People, and that you're looking at the screenwriter for that film. Please welcome to the show a screenwriter, author, and actor who has written and produced screen works, which include Hallmark's Help for the Holidays, Rescuing Madison, Sweet Surrender, On the Twelfth Day of Christmas, Sound of Christmas, The Right Girl. Christmas in Love, and as I said, Church People, and the dark comedy thriller, Extracurricular Activities. You may also have seen him in a recurring role with Don Johnson on Nash Bridges. A and recurring, recurring role that big. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Jack, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bob Sines. What's up, Bob? How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm great. I feel great, Maurice. Well, I'm glad to be here. Well, Bob, I, I hope everything's going well for you. We're just talking briefly about the the strike that the the writers are in right now. Uh, any updates? No, they're not talking yet. It's been six weeks, and they're still not talking. I think they're going to wait until they see what the actors do. I'm in I'm in Screen Actors Guild, so um, uh, they just had a strike vote for Screen Actors Guild too. So. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna wish for the best there. Uh, I mean, my yeah, guy, let me come out with a, an agreement like the PGA Tour did with Lib. Anyway, that being said, Bob, we uh, we <laughs> met at the International Christian Film Festival this year we in did. Orlando, and I, I just want to come right out of the gate with you. I mean, it was a great experience, but what what did you come away uh, feeling as far as the current state of Christian filmmaking in 2023? I, I think it's getting better. Um, okay. I think that 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 people are understanding and uh, filmmakers are understanding that not only do they have to have good stories, but they have to have their technical ability has to be good too. That yeah, that yeah. the sound needs to be great and the the picture needs to be great and the actors need to be competent and and I think what's happening is slowly but surely they are moving you know in that direction which i'm really happy for and you're seeing a lot more rather than face based films which yeah. preach the choir you're seeing uh faith adjacent films which preach don't preach that actually have a story to tell and there's a faith message but it's not hitting you over the head with it well and I, and i think that's the interesting thing about christian film uh, is that, <laughs> you know, it always seems kind of, you know, I mean, if you're a Christian 
and you're looking at a church service, it's okay for you. <laughs> but if you're not a Christian, you're probably going to turn away immediately. And you see a lot of those Christian films. And I like what you said about, let's, let's tell a story here. Let's try to tell a real life experience and draw the viewer in. That's right. Well, you know, the, the, the whole point of it being is that Christians are flawed. Um, we all, we all make mistakes. We all do things we shouldn't do. Um, yep. We all think thoughts we shouldn't think. Yes. Um, if we didn't, Christ wouldn't have needed to come. Correct. But, but so what we have is forgiveness and, and, and repentance. And that's a wonderful, fabulous thing and grace, which is a fabulous thing, but it's not something that you just, that, that is assumed by people who, who watch, you know, a, a faith based film, which preaches just to Christians. Well, and, and that's why I, I, I love church people. With uh, directed by Christopher Sean Shaw, starring Thor Ramsey, and and you had Stephen Baldwin in there, Donald Face, it was, it was just, it was really really good film. But it, it it was it talked about the reality of what's happening in churches. So there in some, was in some know, churches, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah in, in, in some churches. And I just I just thought it was a great comedy. It was a great comedy. And well, it, thank you. It was it was Thor Ramsey's. Uh, um, uh, premise and idea and he had originally written the original script and I was brought in by the producers um, Stephen Baldwin basically to um, to come in and do a uh, do a rewrite on the on the on on Thor's script and I was happy to do it and I was happy to be involved because I believed in the in the uh, the premise and I believed in the story and I thought it was funny and I thought the idea was very funny. And, uh, I, I was, uh, I was pleased to be part of the progress, uh, part of the process. I mean, that, that, that we could, uh, we could get this film made, which any film you get made is a miracle. <laughs> and any I, film I that's good, any guys. film that's good is a two miracle movie. And, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was it was a uh, it was a labor of love on a lot of people's parts, and uh, we were very lucky to get the cast. We got Stephen Baldwin called in uh, a, a lot of of people that he knew, and and uh, it was a very it was a very good movie. Now you've worked in Hollywood, uh, Bob. I mean you you you've been in that world, and 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 also now the Christian world. And is there anything you'd like? to see improved within the world of Christian filmmaking to make, make audiences want to, you know, want to come out more than they, they presently do. Well, I, I like I said before, a good story. I mean, you know, the only thing that people want to see is a good story. They don't yeah. want to go and see, they don't want to go see something that is something they've seen. They want to see good story. Well told that they haven't seen before or parts. There's no story that hasn't been told before, but, the way it's told can be unique and different and, and, and you can get people's interest that way. And so that's what, that's what I, what I'm seeing happening and what's, which is a really good thing. There was at the, at the ICFF, there were a lot of young filmmakers there, which was really great. As far as I was concerned, there were some young yeah, kids yeah. there that were working very hard to make faith, faith adjacent films that, had good stories and good messages, but were also entertaining. One of the most difficult things in Christian filmmaking is just dealing with a, a healthy enough budget, Bob, that you can present your idea the way you you really like to. And I, I don't think that it compares. But nobody's to ever going to have the budget they want. You know, yeah. it, it's just that's just. And right now, with the economy the way it is, uh, before the strike, I was doing a film for one of the big cable networks and. I had done one the year before and they were honest with me and said, you have half the budget you had last year. And, yeah. uh, and it's because of the economy and what's going on and, and money being tight and, and, uh, things are, are much more expensive than they used to be right now. Yeah. So, you know, you have less to work with. So you have to learn how to write to a budget. That's what a, 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 anybody who wants to be a screenwriter needs to learn how to write to a budget. And you do that by learning what things cost 
and how and how you can cut corners to make them look more expensive than they really are and and be more expensive that uh, look bigger than they actually than the money you spend filming and so i think the kind i think the kendrick brothers and the irwin brothers are really good at that but uh, yeah you, they have you know, to be they're really good at that and um I, I think particularly when you look at I Still Believe by the Irwin Brothers, <laughs> that looked like a $100 million film. I, I, I don't think they spent more than $10 million on it. Uh, it looked great. Yeah, um, well, and that's what I said about having it look good and having it sound good. How many movies have you turned on and the sound was terrible and you turned it off? Yeah. Because the sound was bad. The, the, those are all kinds of things that, unfortunately, people who are making – independent film sometimes think well i'll just scrimp on the sound and we'll do the sound ourselves instead of hiring professional sound people and you just yeah, can't yeah. you can't get by with that it just yeah, doesn't yeah. work now the disparity between hollywood and christian filmmaking is huge no matter how you slice this this thing um and i i do you do you see what, where dramatic? what how do you define disparity <laughs> Uh, well, I know, Bob, I, I, I'm just kind of like, you know, assuming here uh, and with a, one big broad stroke, I don't know the facts, but it would seem to I, me. Or I work, I work in the, I work in the, um, in both Christian films and secular films. Yeah. I do both. Okay. And I, the, the, the faith-based films I've worked on, faith adjacent films I've worked on. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of difference really from the people that I work with. I mean, there, there are some things that are, that are, that are different, but making a film is making a film. Okay. And, and it's, it's a business and it still needs to be treated like a business, whether you're making a faith-based film or a faith adjacent film and a secular film, there's really, yeah. it really is putting a good story um now digitally used to be on film but now digitally making putting together a good story and a good a uh, good film um it 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 the only the only difference is that uh there's uh less bad language on the uh, christian film sets yeah just slightly less let me just say this bob we have to catch ourselves uh, we were talking about Phil, but we don't deal with cassette tapes and eight track city boards, all digital. And I forget that a lot of times I keep thinking yeah. about VHSs and whatnot. Anyway, we, we don't even deal with the DVDs anymore, but that being said, so Bob, you don't feel there's a real issue in uh, budgets for Christian films. Uh, I don't know if there is, there's always a, there's always an issue with budget. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Uh, raising the money for uh, any film is super hard. And you, it, it's just a matter of finding the right people that believe in what you're doing. That's that's what you do. You find finance people who believe in in what you're doing. So that's that's where you get your budgets. Yes, do you have to set your budget lower nowadays for a lot of films? Yes. That even in the secular film industry, they're looking at at million dollars and under. For for uh, for new writers breaking in, those are the kinds of scripts they want. Okay, uh, we have a, a question from Chris Rossetti here. He says, "Have you looked into new developments in AI filmmaking?" I hate AI. <laughs> okay. I, I I I despise it with a with a glowing passion. I think it's a cheat. I think that that there's going to be a lot of really incredible lawsuits that go along with using AI because oh, wow. the AI companies are going to be claiming that they have ownership over stuff that you use their AI for. And I wow, think that's, that, interesting. that's coming down the pike because they're letting all these people have this AI and people aren't looking at the fine print. And I think there's going to be a, a big business in, uh, in uh, for the attorneys and the lawsuits that are going to follow I uh, I like I like things created by human beings. God gave us, you know, create creative brains, and He gave everybody, you know, talents. And yeah, uh, sure. he, he, he didn't give them to the computers. And well, it's so, kind of, 
It's kind of funny you say that, Bob, because I watched a pastor in, at Rock Church, Miles McPherson, talk about the fact that the AI robot was asked a question by a human being because they kept gushing over how smart they were. They can come up with a million thoughts and spit out a once in one second and whatever. And the robot said that's something that human beings have, though, that I will never have. And that's a soul. Yep. Uh, well, know, I just I can tell when something's been written by by AI. Now, maybe there'll be a time when I can't. And that will be a very, very, very sad time. But now here's another time. Topic. Here's another. Oh, yeah. OK. So it's AI in motion cap. Yeah. Hey, I know nothing about that. I I, I have done motion cap. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I I I imagine that that they're using it now. Um, I I have no idea. I, I that I that's a that's a question that I can't answer. I wish I could. Um, uh, but I'll I will I will if you're in if you're into VFX, I will say that I once got to have lunch with Stan Winston, who was the greatest special effects guy that ever lived. And that was a treat for me. <laughs> he did all the dinosaurs, the practical dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That, well, he did an amazing job with that. I'll yeah. tell you that. So I, so I had a, I had a, I sat down across from him at lunch one day. So that was pretty fun. Uh, hey, Chris, thanks for the questions, man. Yeah, I mean, thanks, those, those, those I'm some... sorry. I, sorry. I couldn't answer it. Uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a writer and, and I'm not, I'm not into VFX, but uh, I, I I'm not a huge fan of AI just because it replaces humans. Well, and that's what's scary about it, Bob. This that's exactly the threat that AI poses because these things are incredibly uh, capable. They're more capable of spitting out thoughts than human beings, but they 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 they're robots, and uh, it they looks like a dark dark they call novel. They don't right. spit out thoughts. They True. cull stuff from the internet and yeah. put it together. They, yeah. they they take other people's thoughts and put them together in their in 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 a in and combine other people's thoughts into one thing. They they combine other humans' thoughts into one thing. Yeah. So there there is another problem that they're taking other people's uh, intellectual property. And combining it with other people's intellectual property and presenting it as AI. Yeah, so, well, it sounds it it sounds like fuel for Stephen King to write a book. Look, let me just say something to you, Bob, about a book that you wrote yes. uh, on screenwriting, and 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 it's called uh, "That's Not the Way It Works." Hey, um, wait! I have a copy here. Oh, whoa! How about that? Just oh, by the way. Oh, by the way, <laughs> available on Amazon or wherever great books are sold. Um, I love it. I love it, Bob. Tell us about it. It well, it's a book that that I, I I wrote a blog for a while about screenwriting, and a lot of people said you should take the blog and add to it and and write a book about screenwriting because your yeah. your yeah. perspective is interesting, and it comes from a perspective of actually experiencing it and living it. Um, I've got nineteen produced films, um, and. Uh, and I've been in every kind of meeting you can possibly imagine. I've worked with every kind of producer, every kind of director you could possibly imagine. I've been very fortunate in my career to to learn and uh, be at, at the feet of some amazing, amazing filmmakers and writers. And because of that, I, w I, I thought maybe I can write a book from that perspective because there are a lot of screenwriting books out there. But not a whole lot of them are written from people who have actually done it. Interesting. And, and half of, of, of the book is about the business of screenwriting because it's not it's it's an actual business. And as a screenwriter, you're in business for yourself. You're an independent business person. Yeah. And how you handle that and how you learn how to navigate that is a whole after you write a script, there's a whole world of stuff that has to be done that yeah. I don't think any book has ever talked about. And yeah. that's yeah. what I get a lot of credit for, for, for that's not the way it works. Okay. Um, and, and uh, Chip, uh, Chris Rossetti is putting up um, access, how folks can access a copy of, of your book. Thanks Chris well, for Thank for you, that. Chris. I really um, appreciate that. 
Awesome stuff, man. I Now, That's would you great. relate or how would you relate, if there's any difference at all, your books in screenwriting to Christian filmmaking? Is there a difference? It's all the same. It's all the same. It's all the same. It's it's okay. the 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 first half of the book is is basics. Here's what a screenplay is. How this is how you construct it. This is how the formatting goes. This is what this is how you do action, and this is how you do dialogue, and these are kinds of things that you do. It's up to you how you interpret that as a writer. Yeah. But these are all the nuts and bolts of what a screenplay looks like and is, and how it's constructed. Um, the second half of the book on marketing. It uh, could easily be used by Christian filmmakers to to uh, look at how they how what they do with the money once they get it, how they write to a budget, how they how they what pitch meetings look like for writers and what and what uh, production meetings look like for writers. They're all the same. They're, they're yeah. they should be all the same. Um, Let's uh, so, jump. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry. Bob. Go ahead. So that's that's basically basically what it is. So let's jump back to church people real quick. I wanted okay. to revisit uh, that topic real quick. And, and it's, it concerns the mega church in America today. Yeah. And you guys really made that hilarious. I mean, it, it, it was really spot, in my opinion, it was pretty spot on. What, uh, what, I, what I was really shocked at was there was a mega church that let us shoot it there. Oh, wow. And, and so that church, in, um, yeah, in Southern California, uh, actually let let them shoot the movie there, which what I thought was pretty amazing and and pretty pretty spot on for them to do. Yeah, there's but there are, there are a lot of churches out there who have who have lost the message in the delivery mode, I yeah, think. Yeah. And there are a lot of of churches out there that have picked and picked and chosen parts of the Bible that they they think are valid and yes, parts yes, of the Bible yes. they think aren't valid. Yes, and yes. I, I think that's that that is a huge problem, and and writing about it and showing it to people in a way that's accessible and in this case funny, yeah, was yeah. a uh, was and I give Thor Ramsey all the credit for that because it was his his idea, but yeah, yeah. the the was a very 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 good way to do it because the movie is really funny. It, it, and uh, but it yeah. but it has at the core of it at the base of it there is uh, a really really solid message about losing losing the message of the Bible to the way it's delivered. And I, I think one of the things that lacks in Christian filmmaking are comedies, and this was not only a comedy; it was a really good one. And I, thank you. And I, and I think that what made it so funny is the accuracy of it. Of course, it was it was like a tad overblown, and then at the same time, it wasn't overblown because well, well yes, you, you, you know, you, you get away with overblowing things. In oh no, a, in, yeah, in a comedy that's that broad. Oh yeah, um, um, Michael Monks, who played the the pastor, who who is a great actor and a really good guy and a very good friend of mine. He was, he was, uh, he was very, he's been very, um, he was very, very good at hitting a certain note on that pastor and not going over it. Yeah. And so you still, it was still a little over the top, but not enough to where you didn't believe it. And that, that gives him credit as an actor. I, I, I totally agree. We have a question from Lena Figueroa here, who's a recording artist. She says, uh, do you find any pushback from sponsors, lenders, et cetera, from the secular side versus the Christian side since you've worked in both areas? You know, I'm I'm not a producer, so I don't I don't uh, I don't have much to do with the money end of it. Do I yeah. get pushback yeah. from from the secular side because I'm a Christian? Uh, so far, uh, you know, no. Um there, uh, I've never made it a secret that I'm a believer. I've never made it. I've never gone into a meeting and said, "This is I'm a believer, so you can't do this and this and this." And this <laughs> right. But God, uh, Jesus said, "said You need to be light and salt." Yes. And if I go into a, a secular production meeting as light, they're going to fire me. Yeah. But if I go in and I say, "This doesn't work because of this." And salt it with my beliefs. 
Yeah. And so not with my beliefs, but with with Christ's yes. words that 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 I'm supposed to be guided by. Absolutely. That then then that's a whole different thing. And you use logic and not emotion to get those th- to to do things like that. It's not if it works for the story. If there I've been I've turned down jobs where I have the Holy Spirit has said, nope, take the job. There's some things yeah. in it that need to be, you know. But I, but I, there are things that I would change. I change, but I change them because it works for the story. I'm not just changing things to change things. Yes, I'm changing yes. things because it works for the story too. And uh, those are the things that I'm able to solve. I love it. It's a great answer, Bob. Great so answer. As far as as far as financing, uh, the 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 people who are, are producers. Ah, Chris. No, yes, sometimes, yes, if they trust you and you've worked with them. This is a question that says, does the screenwriter have much input in a production after a script's been delivered? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes and no. You're, the director is in charge, and the director has the right to do anything they want with the script, and you can't. You literally can't do anything about it. When you sell a script or you're hired to write a script, you don't own that script. Yeah. And so if you don't own that script, then then you know, if you sell the script, it's like selling a car. You can't tell the person who bought a car from you they can't play paint flames on it. So <laughs> you can't tell somebody that they can't paint flames on your script once you sell it. Absolutely. So it's it's yes, the things get changed, but if you're seasoned and you they know they trust you and they know you know what you're doing and you know that you understand what their point of view is on the, on the film and not yours. And you're willing to work with them by putting in things, you're using your creativity to give them what they want. Yes. You can work all the way through the end of the shooting of the film. And I have on out of 19 films, probably half a dozen. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Now, now, Bob, you also... That took me, it took me years to get to that point, and it took me years to have producers and people who work in the industry understand that I was good at doing that. You yes. don't do that right off the bat. Absolutely. Now, now, Bob, you also worked or wrote the award-winning Farmer in the Bell with a, a good friend of mine, Jen Gotts, and I had the oh, Jen. I was on the phone with, with her. I was on I was on the phone with Jen yesterday. She is okay, very pregnant and very due soon, and uh, and she's going to have a little girl, which we're all going yay. To yes, go well, so that'll be great for you know her son. And so like the, the, the a boy and a girl in that house, and uh, and uh, yeah, I had a nice conversation with her yesterday. I told her if her ears were ringing today, it's because we were talking about her. <laughs> well, she's very due soon, eight months in. Uh, what yep. was it like working with Jen Gods? Oh, I've known Jen for 20 years. So oh wow. We've okay. we've been friends for a long time. She called me and and uh the producers called me and, and said, Look, we need we need some help with the script. Would you be willing to work on the script? And I said, Absolutely. And Jen and I had a nice talk, and they let me do pretty much everything I wanted to do with the, with the rewrite. And, uh, I, I did a very, very, uh, I did a big, a a big radical rewrite on the script and they liked it a lot. And that's a film you see on the screen. Wow. Um, and, and she was in, she starred in that uh, film also with her husband, Jim Chandler, who's also an, a very, very good actor. Oh, he's great. And he's not only that as a couple, they're, so much fun to be around because they're they're just great together. Uh, they but are. Jim is a terrific human being. Uh, he so is. Uh, they actually uh, hosted ICFF a couple of years ago. They're hilarious. They do I work a, great together. Yeah, I have a I have a lot of respect and love for both of them. Uh, both uh, tremendous people. I had an opportunity to uh, appear with Jen and Love Different in 2016. I saw her do something in that film before we shot the biggest scene in the film which involved tears and she literally prayed with anthony hackett the co-star and director director to tears i i I couldn't believe it bob 
I've never seen anything like that before. She's she is a she is a unique human being, and she just she just is able to do a lot of things. And I think she's a a wonderful actress and uh, and very committed to her craft, which is which is a, a wonderful thing too. When you work, you know, you're not only are you getting Jen and Jim, the great people. But you're getting Jim and Jen, the uh, very, very good actors at the same time. Yes, absolutely, you are. Now, 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 Bob, I know that you're in the middle of a writer's strike right now, and there, there's no telling when this thing will be resolved. We pray very soon. But that being said, do you have any, or did you have any projects coming I, up? I, on the I wrote a couple of of scripts that got that went out before the strike. Okay. Uh, a Christmas movie for GAC family um, called the Christmas bake off. Okay. And, and farmer and the bell too, which is, uh, which is uh, right now we're trying to get off the ground. Okay. Um, well, uh, a couple of them. And then I had four, three or four more that were kind of in interesting stages that will, really have to wait till after the strike. Well, we'll all have to wait for the strike if the actors go out. <laughs> but well, yeah. Uh, but but uh, supposedly Christmas Bake Off is going into production in the next week or so so that they can get it done before the strike is over. Hey, I, Bob, I don't know if you care to discuss this at all or talk about it just a little bit. A lot of people don't know, and I did mention in the intro, that you played 10 years in the band The B-Sides. Yes, uh, I did. Uh, uh, that that was, it was a '60s tribute band uh, that uh, we played. Uh, we played. Uh, we played uh, festivals and car shows and and uh, street fairs and all kinds of stuff. And and it was it was a lot of fun. And it was five of the nicest guys that you could ever imagine. And when we lost our keyboard player to. Uh, prostate cancer it kind of just all fell apart because it is it was a cohesive really great band that we all listened to each other as we played and we all played off of each other and it was just it was just like never the same and we it just kind of it lasted as long as it was supposed to last i think yeah and, i was gonna uh, ask if you still maintain contact with the band. oh yeah well yes absolutely absolutely yeah, i do yeah, and but yeah. but they're all in california and i live in nashville now so now, now well, that's now, another funny story we came yeah, to nashville yeah. and i've played in in uh, worship teams my whole life i play okay, guitar okay. And, and mandolin and we went to the church we're in now and i sat down and the worship band came out and started to play and i turned to my wife and said i'm never playing in church again Oh wow! They were all session musicians from Nashville. All uh, Trey Corley, the uh, the guy who uh, runs a band on the Huckabee Show, is yeah. our yeah. is our worship leader, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, some great fabulous musicians that are just awe inspiring and wonderful. And uh, I, it's it's a joy to just sit and worship to with them. Now, Bob, you were a former DJ in San Francisco, and yes, I myself was a yes, former yes, DJ I was as well. Um, uh, tell us about that a little bit. KYCY ninety three three Young Country, <laughs> KFRC ninety seven seven Rock and Roll Heaven. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was a disc jockey for uh, a few years. Uh, radio is a wholly unique business that doesn't treat the people who work for it very well unless you're one of the big stars oh man that's a great point yes it's unfortunate. It's, a, it's a very very strange very interesting business I, I got to do it because i wanted to yeah and i'm glad i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> Yeah, you know, I got out for the same reason, Bob. It doesn't treat the uh, talent very well. It's a very and it's very finicky. It's oh no, I walked, I walked into a uh, a, uh, a a meeting that they called all of us into, and they said, "Okay, all of you disc jockeys in here, you're all fired. We're changing the we're changing the format to uh, world music from country and western, and you're all fired." And that was it. <laughs> yeah, that's radio. Turn in that's your radio. key cards and and go away. 
What and do you think? Was, yeah, that was it. Well, what do you think the state of uh, so so? How would you describe radio now in twenty? It's all it's all digital, and it's all a lot of the radio announcers go in or from home, do all their breaks from home, and then they're just added in when they play the music. Okay, most a lot of the a lot of the of the of the DJs don't even go to the go to the radio station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know if it was a dying, you know, art. Uh, radio. Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. There's less and less music stations um, and uh, more and more, you know, talk radio and news radio and all those things. And those people are are some, are in, in studios. But yeah. the 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 fun DJ stuff, there's not a lot of that. I'm sure there are some morning shows around the country that I'm sure are still good and some drive time shows where got where 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 DJs are still showing up and and doing their thing and taking calls and doing interviews and all that stuff, that, all the things that I got to do. Yeah. But but it's not as prevalent as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, now, Bob, this has been a great conversation, man. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, before we get out of here, though, I do want to ask you, what do you have any advice that you can leave with young screenwriters out there that are thinking about well, of course, right now is not the time to be a screenwriter. If you're well, sure, it's time. It. You get you're still going to spend the time writing. You just can't try yeah. and sell it. But yeah, that strike's going to be over, and when the strike's over, you got a pile of scripts to sell. It's not. You should still keep writing. I have two yeah. two two pieces of advice. Okay. The first is don't give up. You're going to face rejection after rejection and all kinds of problems, and you're going to get close on some things, and you're going to get right up to the edge of getting something filmed, and it's going to get canceled. I, there's all kinds of things that happen. A million things have to go right for a movie to get made, and if one thing goes wrong, it can get it can disappear. Wow. So, so you have to have endless patience and no that you can't give up it, it it averages when you first write your script to getting a career going about 10 years okay and that's okay. just the facts the other thing is don't be boring okay <laughs> yeah write stories that, yeah. write stories that that have meat to them write stories that are interesting write stories that 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 grab people write stories that are funny or scary or 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 dramatic or whatever you want to do but make sure they're interesting don't be boring i love it great advice uh because patience is is not something the younger generation is really a, you know comfortable with in 2023 there is a lot of uh, of instant gratification people out there that yeah. they think that they wrote their script. Now let's make it. And now let's walk down the uh, red carpet. And now let's get a bag of money. And <laughs> yeah. Here, here's That's my funny. answer. Ah, there it is again. That's not. That's the way not it the works way it works. Science. And that, so yeah. you know, one of the things you have to do if you want to be famous, don't be a screenwriter. When the screenwriter walks down the red carpet, that's when they go to commercial. So. Yes. Thank you, Lena, for, for that comment. It was well you, said. Uh, we're talking with Bob Sainz, uh screenwriter of uh, the hit faith-based comedy Church People and many other uh, films. Uh, Bob, you. how can fans follow you on social media or by website? I'm on uh, Facebook and uh, I'm just Bob Sainz. That's, you know, just my name. And then I don't have a fan page. There's a, that's not the way it works page, but I hardly go there. And then I have a, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on Twitter, but I don't do personal stuff. It's all screenwriting stuff. Um, and that's uh, at B-O-B-S-N-Z. Um, and that's my Instagram and my, uh, and my Twitter handles. And, okay. uh, but it's all, it's all screenwriting on Twitter. I don't, uh, it's uh, there are some I do some family things on Facebook for friends, okay. but uh, Twitter is all is all uh, all about the industry and and uh, and screenwriting and selling books. So that's what yes. that's all about. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you for being on the show. And if you're coming in late 
folks and you're like, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't. Just watch the replay on YouTube or Facebook, or you can listen to this in interview in its entirety on Spotify, where all major podcasts are heard. You can hear Bob Science on the Maurice Brown Show. Bob, thank you once again for being Maurice, on. Maurice, thank you for having me. I come back anytime. Well, th well, thank you. I, I, I love talking to you, Bob. Love chopping it up with you, especially with all the wisdom that I can glean from you. I love it and appreciate it. Uh, Bob, may the peace of Christ be with you and your family. God bless you. You too. Thank you.